Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. With these, I will proceed to create or to make the final impression tray. Before we do this, I'd like to go through the sequence of events which we will follow. We will start by drawing the outline of the final impression tray on the cast. Then a wax spacer will be placed with 28 gauge green wax. Then we will mix a cold cure acrylic and adapt this to our preliminary cast. And then we will retrieve the tray with the wax spacer and trim. Following this, we will go back to the mouth and border mold the final impression trays where we desire to do so. Following this, we will, we will remove the wax spacer and place small holes throughout the impression tray. This time we'll go back to our model and for sake of time today with the television, I'd like to use only the maxillary cast to make our impression tray on. The procedure is identical with the lower impression tray. So to begin with, I'd like to outline on our cast the area that we will be covering with our final impression tray. And this is the first step in constructing the tray. If you can find the fovea palatini in the preliminary impression, you can pencil just beyond that area over your hamular notches into the buccal vestibule, the buccal frenum, the labial flange, the labial vestibule, the labial frenum, and the same on the other side. For those of you who have made a number of dentures by this time, it's fairly easy to follow the anatomy of your cast, even if it is a little bit overextended. I'd also like to do this on the lower at this time, even though we're not going to be making a tray on this model. You can see here in this close-up that in the external oblique area, the uh, external oblique line area, we are overextended, and we can pencil on our cast the most likely area for the flange of the denture or the flange of the impression tray and this can be modified at a later time when we go to the mouth with compound. But again, we outline the entire periphery of our final impression tray, particularly in the lateral throat area, otherwise known as the retromylohyoid space, floor of the mouth in this manner. This will guide us in placing the wax spacer on the cast. Now Dr. Franks in his article used a base plate wax for the spacer. In this sequence I'm going to use 28 green, gauge green wax because a number of us have found that the green wax is a much better spacer and is a more practical spacer. So at this time we'll go back to our maxillary cast and proceed to adapt the wax spacer. Of course the 28 gauge wax is supplied in sheets. I won't have to heat this much at all because being in front of the lights of the television camera it is a little bit soft at this time. This can be adapted usually one half of the model at one time and finger pressure can be used to initiate this adaptation. The lines that we drew on the cast show through this wax very nicely and it is possible to trim back to that line with our number seven wax spatula. 
Also, a piece of moist cotton is advantageous in adapting this. I have previously lubricated the model with a, an acrylic separator, and this facilitates the removal of the wax spacer with the final impression tray. Now we'll trim back to that line. and proceed to do the other side. We are going to try to, re to retrieve the uh, spacer with the final impression tray after it is formed. Now we'll use another piece of wax. The wax or the acrylic separator actually makes it a little more difficult to adapt the wax but it's necessary when you are trying to retrieve the wax with the impression tray. After you've done this a few times it goes very very quickly and you again follow the line you've drawn on your cast and remove the wax. The excess wax. Now at this time, we're almost ready to start mixing the cold cure acrylic, which we will be making our tray out of. The nice part about using the wax spacer, you can readapt it, you can add wax where necessary, and you can shorten it where necessary. Again, going back to the line that you previously drew on your cast. Now at this time, I'd like to show you the material we will be using for our final tray. It's a material called Kerr Forma Tray. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Any number of cold cure tray materials are adequate for this procedure. This is a convenient material because it is prepackaged and I'll mix this. I'll mix it up and then I can do my final adaptation of the uh, wax while we're waiting for the acrylic to polymerize. The monomer for this acrylic comes in a flexible tube and it comes in a convenient mixing container as I mentioned. I like to use a popsicle stick for mixing this material because it's very difficult to remove from a blade. When we mix this thoroughly, I can go back to our model for a moment, to our cast, and do any refinements I would like. such as flowing this wax together while we're waiting for the acrylic to polymerize. You can also flame this material, trying to create an even thickness, a block out throughout. Now we will also take a rolling uh, pad. This is a very convenient method for rolling out the acrylic material and we'll use this to create a flat, thin bulk of material before we apply it to our wax spacer. Once the acrylic has begun to polymerize, mm -hmm. I like to wet my hand and gather the material together. About the time that it no longer will stick to your hands would be an excellent time to begin rolling it out on the mixing pad. I'll roll it into a ball. It's actually a lot of fun to do this. You have to move fairly quickly with this because if you wait a little bit too long you don't have the time that you really need to adapt it to the model. 
once this has begun to polymerize to the point where it will hold together, you can remove this from the board and immediately lay it over your model and begin to, ad to adapt it with finger pressure. If you do this quickly, you'll be able to go back with a sharp instrument or a number seven spatula and trim most of the excess, which saves you quite a bit of time when you go to trim the final impression tray. I like to use a red-handled knife, but uh, any number of uh, sharp instruments could be used, such as a sharp number seven. The material is still soft enough that I can trim away the excess and still readapt the material. As you're trimming it, it tends to distort, and you have plenty of time to go back and readapt this. It might be noted that we keep the wax spacer just short of the area that we penciled on the cast so that when we go to the mouth to border mold our impression tray, that it will be supported by the acrylic on the extension of the flange. This is the method we use to construct this tray. Now, in a few minutes, this would be adequately prelim polymerized, but to facilitate matters, I have already made the final impression trays on this model and retrieve them for you, and I'd like to show them to you at this time. You can see, if we can get in a little bit closer here, that the wax spacer was retrieved. At the same time, the acrylic tray was removed from the model on both the upper and lower impression. I would like to show you just on the upper at this time that this tray really should look like a denture without teeth on it, if you've constructed it adequately. The more accurate your final impression tray is, the easier it is to secure an accurate final impression. You can also see the spacer on the lower tray. Now at this time, we will go back to the clinical situation, and in the areas of exposed acrylic on the periphery of this tray, we will add compound to border mold our final impression tray. This time, I'm going to adapt a wax occlusal rim to the mandibular tray. This is not added to the maxillary tray. And we do this only to give the tongue support and bring it into a normal tongue position while we take our final impression. Again, we would be using a different source for our heat and it takes a little bit longer to use the alcohol torch for this. But we place simply a small occlusal rim on the mandibular tray to give the tongue support. Just following this, we'll place our holes to allow the impression material to exude from the impression. Many times uh, you can use a little bit of sticky wax prior to the adaptation of your occlusal rim to hold, to help hold the rim in place, although I like to sear the material to the tray, which we'll do in the following. Seal the rim in place. And I'll proceed. I'm not going to finish this at this time, but I will place a few holes so you can see the manner in which we do this. This is a number six round burr, a carbide, and I'll use it to place a few holes in our tray. I don't think you can place too many holes, although I usually space these out at about a half an inch. 
You can also use a smaller burr if you like. I think you can see that I've placed these holes around the periphery. I have very important areas in the lateral stroke form. I'll place a couple here. I think you can see them now. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.